The before tax income for Hawks Corp was $100,000. Was hundred. The before tax income for Hawks Corp for 2019 was $101,000. For 2020, it was 77,400. However, the accountant noted that the following errors had been made. Sales for 2019 included 38,200 that had been received in cash during 2019, but for which the related products were delivered in 2020. Title did not pass to the purchaser until 2020. Ending inventory on December 31st, 2019 was understated by 8640. The December in ending inventory has not yet been adjusted to the inventory account. Assume that Hawks has a periodic system and that no adjustment has been made to the opening balance. The bookkeeper in recording interest expense for both 2019 and 2020 on bonds payable made the following entry. The bonds have a face of $250,000 and pay a stated rate of 6%. They were issued at a discount of $15,000 on January 1st, 2019 to yield an effective interest rate of 7% using the effective interest method. Ordinary repairs to equipment had been charged in error to the equipment account during 2019 and 2020. In total, repairs in the amount of 8,500 in 2019 and 9,400 in 2020 were charged this way. The company uses the declining balance method and applies a rate of 10% in determining its depreciation charges. Assume that Hawks Corp applies IFRS. And we're asked to prepare a schedule showing the calculation of corrected income before tax for 2019. And then we're asked to prepare the entries that the company's accountant would prepare in 2020, assuming the errors were discovered while the 2020 books are still open. Okay, so let's do the first. So let's say A is a schedule of corrected income. So let's put our years up here. So we're going to have 2019 and then we're going to have 2020. So we'll start off by putting income before tax. And we're given these numbers in the question. Right up at the top here, we're told income for 2019 was 101 and it was 77,400 in 2020. So 101 and 77,400 in 2020. Okay, so the first, so let's list out the corrections. So we're gonna have sales erroneously included in 2019 income. Let's just make some room here. So we're gonna have then, so the sales in 2019 were overstated. If we look at number one, it says sales for 2019 included 38,200 38, that had been received in cash in 2019, but the related products were delivered in 2020. So we need to pull down 2019 by 38,200. But this is gonna be an add back for 2020 because the products were delivered in 2020. Let's look at number two. So number two is ending inventory was understated by 8640 and it's periodic and the opening balance wasn't um, adjusted. So let's talk about that understatement of 2019 closing inventory. So we're going to have this amount is going to be minus 38200 and I'm going to add back, actually no, wrong number. Uh, 8640 understated, but that means we're going to have to pull down 8640 out of 2020. And why is that? It's because it's a periodic system. And what that means is that we're computing our, our, in, our inventory based on our opening inventory, um, less purchase, plus purchases, less sales is our ending inventory. So because we're using periodic, then we need to pull down because it would have flown through 2020, the fact that 2019 was understated. Um, let me just fix this. Okay. And then we've got adjustment to bond interest expense is our next one. So 
what's going on with this? So we're told that the accountant recorded debit, interest, expense, credit, cash for two years. So let's take a look. Let's up here. Let's take a look at this bond. So it says that it's a, a 6% stated rate and a 7% effective rate. So in order to figure out what this entry should be, I'm going to run an effective interest amortization schedule just for a couple of years here. Cash paid. This is going to be interest expense. This is going to be amortization. And this is going to be the carrying value. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is figure out what the carrying value of this bond was. So it says the bond has a face value of 250000 and a stated rate of 6%. They were, it was issued at a discount of 15,000. So here's our carrying, our initial carrying value is gonna be the stated rate of 250 minus 15,000. So it was originally the carrying value was 235,000 and it's yielding a 7% effective interest rate. Okay, so here we're gonna have day one and then we're gonna have 2019 and 2020 here. So the cash that's going to be paid is going to be the stated rate times the stated, uh, the face value times the stated rate. So we're going to be paying out 15,000 each period in cash. So it looks like this was accounted for on a cash basis. The interest expense from uh, the effective interest is going to be the carrying amount times the effective interest rate. And the amortization is going to be the difference of the two. Oops. Um, Sal, I think. There we go. Whoops. Okay. So why is it formatting as a date? That's weird. Okay, let's fix that. Who knows what I did there? Okay. So there's your difference. And then the next, so then the carrying value here, remember the base of this note is 250,000. So we're going to be increasing it by the amortization get it closer to that 250. So now my interest expense is going to be the revised carrying value times the stated rate. And I can pull down my amortization. So this is what should have been recorded as interest expense right here. And instead, what was recorded was this. So what we are going to do is record the difference. So the difference is going to be this amortization. So those are our adjusting entries because you can see we recorded 15,000 of interest expense in cash every year, meaning that it was accounted for on a cash basis and our interest expense using the effective interest rate should have actually been these numbers. So because we've already recorded these numbers, we only need the difference, which is this amortization. So we are going to have that 1450 here pulling down income and here pulling down income again, just the same numbers from right here. What did I just do? Okay, one, four, five, zero. And then this one is gonna be one, five, five, two. Okay. Exactly the amounts from right here, 1450 and one, five, five, two rounded. Okay, next we're gonna have repairs erroneously charged to equipment. So we need to take those out. And that's the last one here. Ordinary repairs number five had been charged an error to the equipment account. In total, the repairs were 8,500 in 2019. So this should be, whoops, this should be minus 8,500. And 9,400 in 2020. Now, we also need to recognize that the equipment account is a capital account, so we're amortizing it or depreciating it. So now we need to add back, what should I just do here? Now we need to correct depreciation on equipment. So what we need to do, and it says they're using the declining balance method of recording depreciation. So here, what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have So here I'm gonna have 8,500 times 10%. That gives me my depreciation for 2019 that I'm adding back. So this is actually making my income slightly better because I shouldn't have included it in depreciation. I've already included the entire expense right here. 
And then in 2020, what we need to realize is that we're going to have, we're going to be depreciating both the 850 and the additional, um, both, sorry, both of the amounts, the 9,400. So the, eight, the 8,500 also rolls forward. So my depreciation then is going to be, it's going to be 8,500 minus the 850 because we reduced that carrying value times 10% is going to give me, whoops, I think I need some brackets in there. Okay, so that's my, this is the same amount here being depreciated, but then I also have another amount to depreciate, which is the 9,400 that I put through at 10%. So that's my, the new addition depreciated. So you can see that the sum of these two, I'm actually adding back 1705 in uh, in 2020. So now I'm going to have my corrected income, income tax, which is simply going to be my sum. So here I'm going to have 62,340 and I'm going to have 97,713. All right, so that gets me through A. And now B is asking me to prepare some journal entries. Okay, so B are journal entries, corrections. So I'm gonna have, so for the sales, let's start with the sales here. I'm gonna have, and it asked me only for the journal entries in 2020 assuming the books are still open. So there, these are my 2020 journal entries. So I would have debit retained earnings to pull down my 2019 sales revenue and credit sales revenue for 38,200. Because in 2020, I want to increase my sales revenue and I need to pull down the 2019, which is going to go through retained earnings. Okay, so then now let's do inventory. Let's just do them over here, just so they're not formatted so weird. So inventory, so we're going to have debit inventory. EV640, because we're increasing it. And then we're going to have credit retained earnings. And this is assuming that this is to correct the opening inventory. And then of course we'll have our correction to inventory as we go. And the inventory count may have been adjusted during the 2020 year as a result of interim inventory counts, um, or if the ending inventory was counted at year end and adjusting entry was already made. So it might've already flown through cost of sales. That one's a little bit tricky. Um, okay, let's take another look here. So number three is gonna be our bonds payable correction. So we're gonna go bonds payable here. So we need to increase our interest expense. So we're simply going to go debit retained earnings for the 2014 one, 1450 and credit table 1450 because of course it would be debit interest expense, credit bonds payable. And then for 2020, we're going to have debit interest expense bonds table the current year. And this is going to be my 1552. Okay. And then for the equipment, the incorrect repairs, I'm just going to have debit retained earnings. 
edit equipment because I'm removing the equipment. Remember, we have to remove out the amount that was incorrectly put into that account. So here I'm going to put 8,500 and 8,500. And then I'm going to have my accumulated, my accumulated amortization I need to correct as well. So I'm going to have debit accumulated depreciation. And this is going to be that amount I calculated above of the 850 that I'm adding back for the accumulated depreciation. And then this is going to go through retained earnings for 2019. And then for 2020, of course, I'm just going to have repairs, maintenance, expenses. Which is going to be 9400 and credit equipment. We'll just take it out right out, right out of there. Okay. And we're still gonna need to correct for this uh, accumulated depreciation that was already taken as well. So we're gonna go debit accumulated depreciation. Equipment. And it's going to be the sum of those two numbers, which was 1705 and credit depreciation expense. 705. All right, and that takes us through all the journal entries that we needed to complete. So we've gone through each of the journal entries here. So for sales, we want debit retained earnings credit sales because we're taking down 2019 and increasing 2020 sales revenue. For inventory, we adjusted 86.40 through retained earnings to increase 2019. And then for 2020, we weren't sure if this amount needed to be adjusted or not. And if it did, then we would have debit cost of goods sold credit retained earnings for that one because of the way that inventory flows through. The adjustment to bond expense. So we, for 2019, we hit debit retained earnings credit bonds payable. And for 2020, we hit debit interest expense credit bonds payable. For the repairs charged to the equipment, we remove first we remove the amount from the equipment. So we dealt with the larger amount first. So we said debit retained earnings credit equipment for the entire amount or debit repairs and maintenance credit equipment to pull out the larger amounts. And then we also needed to correct this depreciation piece that had flown through in error. And that's where we were recording an entry to accumulated depreciation and retained earnings for the 2019 piece. And for the sum of these two, which is 1705, we hit an entry here for debit accumulated depreciation and credit depreciation expense for 1705, because that's our current entry and our books are not closed. Okay, and C says, from the perspective of an investor, comment on the quality of Hawks Corp's earnings as reported in 2019 and 2020. Quality of earnings refers to how solid the earnings numbers are. High quality earnings are unbiased, reflective of underlying business fundamentals and sustainable. Prior to the correction of several errors in the reported net income for 2019 and 2020, Hawks Corp reported before income before tax income of 101 and 77. After the correction, Hawk Corp's corrected income was 62 and 97. An investor may assess that Hawks Corp has low quality earnings because the company's reported earnings may be significantly biased and have a higher margin of potential misstatement. That is what we would respond for C, something along those lines anyways. And that takes us through the conclusion of this question.